Hey everybody, it's Gina B. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a few days, um, but um, I've been really wanting to try to find the time and manage things uh, so I could come on and do a tutorial uh, of some tags that I made recently. <clears throat> and, uh, and I took pictures of them the other night <clears throat> and put them on Instagram and several of my followers said that they would love to see a tutorial. First and foremost, I a while back, it was probably a month, maybe longer, I saw a tutorial video on YouTube. Um, I believe her name is Rachel or Raquel, but her channel, her YouTube channel name is Scrap Cozy and she did her version of faux wood panel tags. Now I watched the video and I thought her tags were beautiful. However, she some some of the um, supplies that she used um, I did not have, and I did not want to have to go out and buy them. But I wanted to try to make them with things and supplies that I, that I already had in my arsenal here at home. So, and that's what I did. And I think I did a pretty gosh darn good job. Um, there's three different ones here. Um, I'm gonna try to lift them up for you. There's the first one. And then there's this one. Um, and then there's this one. I really, really enjoyed making these, and um, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to go through the steps and show you exactly how I made each of them because there's a few differences, a few different steps that I did to make all three, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Um, but uh, if you're new to my channel and this is the first time you've stopped by, thank you. Uh, and if you're one of my uh, followers from the beginning and you're part of my, I just want to thank you for continuing to support me and, uh, and just for giving me those words of encouragement and, and just those, the incredible uh, kind words and compliments that you've been leaving me messages on the bottom of some of my videos. I just want to thank you so much for being my wonderful crafty little tribe. Um, but if you're new or if you or if you've been with me for a little while and you haven't done so, please, please, please click subscribe if you're new and most definitely click the that little notification bell so you can be updated and give, give no, been given notice of future videos um, because th that's really important. Uh, I have tons of ideas that I want to share and uh, I'm just, I'm really humbled and I appreciate that so many of you already have shown interest in and that you want to um, continue to be a part of, of my channel. So, all right, so we're gonna get started. First and foremost, we're gonna do this one first, okay? Um, where are they? <laughs> I made a couple of them, okay. So, to save a little time, I just, to save a little time, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did, so don't worry. Um, I cut pieces of just thin cardboard cracker box like that's what I did and uh, they're all measure they all measure a little bit differently but they're around four inches wide by uh, five and a half to six inches tall and I used a corner rounder punch to um, make them look like a you know like an old wooden sign and yeah and then I literally just took a ruler, I know I have a ruler here somewhere, um, and I was not exact, because I, 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 it's just not what I do. Um, but on 
average. I just kind of split it up as best I could. It was like one and seven and seven eighths inch in, and then the first line goes, and then uh, one and a half inch, and then one and seven eighths again, so somewhere around there. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, have you ever seen a wood panel or or, or a, a board of wood that was per the, you know the lines were perfectly measured? No, uh, and I wanted him. I wanted them to look as natural as possible. So, and then after I did that, I just took a because I really really like it a lot. I just bought these. They're kind of pricey, but so worth it. Um, Pigma brush pens. Arch archival ink. They've been around for a while, but <clears throat> I, the only ones I'd ever tried was just like the plain like black ink, but this package, the paint, the color is, um, the ink is sepia, and this one, I don't know if you can see it very well, but the tip is just like, uh, almost like a paintbrush, and it's, um, I am loving the sepia. I really am. So then I literally just kind of made a mark at each end, like here and here, uh, so I could make somewhat of a straight line. And then I would just, and then I would just take the ruler and just gently brush down to make those lines in the faux wood. Then, um, then I would take, now see, in Raquel's or Rachel's, video. She uses infusion pa pigment powders, I think. You know, they're very similar to the brushos, and, and I know those are popular too. Uh, but again, I didn't have those, but I had other things, and I thought, okay, I, I can make this work. I can, I can make tags just as beautiful as she did, but with different supplies. So what I did was I experimented and played around for a little bit, and then, you know, like seven hours just disappeared. Yeah, it happens. Um, so, and this is what I did for, for at least one of them. Ugh, let's get rid of that. Okay, so this is important, at least for my process, it was important. Um, inexpensive gloss gel medium or, or gel medium just by itself. It doesn't have to have, be gloss. Um, so, because it helps the paint or whatever it is that you're using to spread or flow, <clears throat> excuse me, flow nicely onto the tag. So I'm going to put a little bit of that gel medium and then let me see, what did I do first? Okay, then I did, oh, I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Then I did, um, I used to make one of them, n I don't think I used it, used it on this one, but part of it I did. I think this one was just this Tim Holtz Distress Paint Vintage Photo and maybe some Walnut Stain Distress Oxide. I think that's what I did for this one. This one I'm going to do Tim Holtz Distress Paint Vintage Photo and Distress Paint Brushed Pewter. Okay, and I'm going to just shake them up a little bit, do it off camera so it doesn't make you feel like you're going to be sick. Okay, and then we're going to put a little dab over here. And we're going to do the same with the vintage photo. Over here. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, I just used, um, let me see, I got the, a sponge from Hobby Lobby, I think. You know, it's got those holes, you know, like it looks like looks like a block of Swiss cheese. Um, but this sponge material works really well. Okay, now, because I do one panel or one, one piece, one strip at a time, because I want to give the illusion of, I mean, not every single slat or piece of wood in that panel is going to look exactly the same. That's, that's just not the way it is. And again, I wanted it to look as natural as possible. So I just took a piece of inexpensive um, masking tape and just taped it off. 
on one corner. And then and I took my sponge and I dabbled it a little bit into the vintage photo paint and then a little bit into the uh, gloss uh, gel medium and a little bit, just a little bit into the brushed pewter. Okay, now if you can watch, yep, okay, I'm, I just want to make sure I'm on screen or on in focus. Vertical strokes. Don't go back and forth. Don't go side to side. Just vertical strokes like this. And do it again. And do it again. Until you get kind of like the striation look and the... the uh, now if you feel like it's too much, you can always take a piece of... It's here somewhere. Where are they? Oh, you just take that. Oh, no. I'm not sure where my baby wipes are, but you can just take a piece of paper towel and just rub it gently and take some of it off if you think it's too dark. And then, and if you want to add a little bit more of like the brush pewter, again, you just Just like that. Yep, just vertical strokes one way. Okay, and then when it dries, it'll look, you'll see like the the the, the grain. It look it'll look like the grain of wood. Um, this one dried really well. You can see, it, it, it looks so much better once it dries. Okay, now we're just going to leave that. I'm going to just pull that up, leave that to the side, and we're going to do another one. Where is the other one? I have another one. Okay, this one we're going to do a little different. I used a little Distress Oxides. This one's Gathered Twigs. This one's Iced Spruce. I think I'm going to give myself a little spot here. Mm. Make sure it's on camera so you can see it. Okay. Yeah, this one's Distress Oxide Iced Spruce. And it looks like a grayish, mm, kind of like a little bit, it looks like a little bit of a, like a grayish, little tint of green in there, but, but that's, that's what it looks like to me. I love Distress Oxides. Over an 18 month period of time, I have accumulated and purchased almost every single color of Distress Oxide there is. I think I'm, I think I'm only five or six away from having every single color. That's how much I love Distress Oxide. Yeah, Tim Holtz, he's pretty awesome. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna just put just a little bit of water there. Yeah. A little bit more there. Okay, so we're going to go like this. And rub that in. And see what that looks like. Oh yeah, you can see it mixed in with the... Probably should have taped that. Yeah, I should have. That's okay. I can go back over it again. Oh yeah, I can see the iced spruce in this. Okay, we're going to just do a little dab of... Oh yeah, I can see. I wish I could show it. I wish it would show better on the camera, but you can see the, the little bit of the, the faint look of the ice spruce. You can see it in there. You can. Hey, Brahmas. Okay. Now these tags are already done. I'm going to Make sure they're off to the side so I don't get paint and stuff all over them. Okay, so we're going to go like this. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more of that. Okay, we're just going to let that dry. And I'm going to put that to the side. 
wipe this up a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to do at least just one. I think you, I think so far you're, you're getting the idea. I'm hoping that you're getting the idea of what to do with, you know, the, with these particular ones. I use the Tim Holtz Distress Paints. I'm using the Distress Oxides um, for paint with the gel medium. Really, the gel medium really helps kind of spread it out and it flows better down onto the card, I mean the tag. Um, so, and then we're going to, where's the sponge? Yeah, okay. Okay, um, then so this one, I'm gonna, is this dry? Yeah, it's dry. It is so hot here <clears throat> in the south where I live um, that instantly, it's like I don't even need a heat tool right now because the, the humidity is just like everything just poof, dries like that just poof just done so <clears throat> and right now I'm I got a fan going I hope it, I hope you can't hear it I hope it's not bothering anyone okay no I don't want to do that okay, so this is dry and then we're going to lay this down and just do the middle Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so mm. and we're gonna do this. I hope everyone's doing all right. I know I haven't really like. I mean, I, I did like. Uh, I did a live. I don't know what was it four or five days ago of um, gel plate printing. I just needed to have fun that day. Um, but, and I did more chatting than I, than I did gel plate printing. But some of the prints did come out good and I was pleased with that. So there. Uh, now this we're going to do a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit more of the, yeah. Yeah, it's just, you got to have that gel medium. It, it just, it really makes a big, big difference. Okay, so we're going to do that. So that, that side, that part's going to be a little bit lighter than the one next to it. And that's what I like about it. Because not, not one tag has come out like the other. And I really, I love that part of it. That it's, every single one's different in some way. Okay, now. That's a little bit lighter. We're going to pull that tape off gently. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before I did anything, both sides, both sides of this cracker box cardboard, okay? I gessoed both sides. A thin coat of gesso on both sides. Okay. This side I don't worry too much about the actual side where you know you can see the advertisement for the crackers or whatever it is that was inside the box because I'm going to now that I've gessoed that side, this side's going to be covered with a coffee stained or tea stained paper. So I'm not I don't worry so much about that side because it's going to be covered up, but the but the layer of gesso tends to cover up or tone down the, the 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 image of the crackers or whatever whatever it was that was in the box so but it's going to be covered anyhow so I don't worry too much about it but yeah both sides sorry I just remembered that I did not say that in the beginning uh, but both sides of the tags are gessoed you know some of them I tried um, acrylic white paint but it didn't it didn't hold, it didn't absorb, it didn't tape to the cardboard as well as the gesso did. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would stick with gesso, not the white paint. I mean, you can do it. I, I, it, it, I did it with the white paint, but it just didn't hold. It just didn't grab onto the paint and 
didn't absorb it the way I wanted it to. So anyhow, I would stick with personal preference, but I would stick with the gesso. Okay, so that's gonna, I'm gonna need like a minute with that. Okay, and then we're gonna go over here. And now we're, we can like kill two birds with one stone. Okay, and then we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take this off. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to go back over with that uh, Pigma pen, but that's okay. That's okay, I got plenty of masking tape. Plenty. So what's everybody up to? I just watched a few minutes ago, oh, a few minutes ago, about an hour ago, um, I watched uh, Joey, Joey Defee's weekly junk journal spread layout live video. I just, I just love her. I, I love her, her voice is melodic. She is talented. She's got such brilliant ideas. Um, I really, really enjoy watching her. Mm -hmm. So that's just a little, just a little tidbit, just a little tip, maybe suggestion if you have never heard of her. Her name is Joey, De, Joey, Joey Defee, J-O-I-E, and then D-E, and then I think it's F-I. I think that's how you spell it. That's her channel. I will, I will try to remember to post a link below to her channel because she really is. She is like wicked smart, and and her voice. You just, you, you just. I could listen to her talk all day long, and she's talented, and she's given me some brilliant ideas. Because um, I started a junk journal, um, a meditation slash prayer journal for myself with you know but I turned but I made it out of you know m junk mail and book pages and this and, and and I've put a lot of this I've done my version of some of the spreads that I've seen her do on her channel and um, I just really enjoy watching her so I'll try really hard to remember to put a link to her channel she is pretty awesome okay so I'm gonna put a little bit more brown on this Oh, no, got to have the, the gel medium. Oh, yeah, you got to have the gel medium. It, it's the bomb. It's the bomb. It's the bomb diggity. That's what my daughter used to, one of my daughters used to say when she was younger. She's like, oh, mom, that's the bomb diggity. Or if I made a really good meal that she loved, it was, uh, oh, mom, that was scrump delicious. That's what she used to say to me. Sometimes I really miss them, miss my girls being younger. Now they're both adults, young adults, and doing their own thing. And um, But anyhow, sometimes I just miss certain parts of when they were little. Okay, so we're going to pull that up and let that dry and then bring this back over here because I'm sure that's dry by now. And we're going to do the last strip and then I'll show you what the next step is. Yay! You're probably, everybody's thinking, yeah, thank God. This one is making me crazy. I know. I'm a weirdo. Okay. Now. We're gonna. Oh no! I need some more medium gel medium. Gotta have it. It's just. It's what makes the paint flow nicely onto the. So if I've forgotten to say something or explain something, please post a message below. I really, really try very hard to answer everybody or respond to everybody. Um, you know, I don't respond to the trolls, but. Um, but if you've got something nice to say <laughs> or um, a, a question, you know, a valid question or you want to just say, hey, Gina, um, really liked the video, but how did you do this because you neglected to tell us? Um, I'll be more than glad to, to uh, give you the answers. 
Okay, so there's that one. See, now if you look carefully, each panel is a little different and that and it looks more realistic. Love it. Okay, so I'm gonna set that up over there and then we're gonna go to pull this one gently off. Oh, I don't wanna rip off that gesso. Yeah, just be careful when you do this because I mean the tape, I mean the tape helps me, but um, and you may not need the tape. You may be more, much more coordinated than, than I am, which is probably the case. Um, but but just be gentle when you pull the tape off so you don't pull that layer of gesso that you put on because it really is important. Okay, so let me see. Mm, let's do something. Oh yeah. Vertical strokes, remember? Just one one direction, not side to side, not up and down. Just vertical strokes, just like this. Okay, and we're gonna put a little bit more darker stuff in there and a little bit more of that. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to pull that off, that one off anyhow, gently. Okay, yeah, I've got so much masking tape, I don't, I don't need to save all these pieces. Again, you can see the difference. I love it. I really, I mean, I really love making these. I'm, I swear, at this, at this point, I mean, I, every single I see n more and more new wonderful tutorials, new ideas on pockets and tucks and embellishments and junk journal spreads and oh my OMG like I just I love you all so much I wish you would just slow down because I'm never going to finish this carpet bagger because I just get so distracted so easily I know I'm a loop I'm a cra I'm crazier than a what is it my my grandmother used to say this you're crazier than a hoot owl that's what she'd say uh, yeah I'm a I'm a loon okay so while those two are drying I've got one more over here that I where is it Gina what did you do with it come on okay so I did this one too this one is uh shaped and measured and cut the corners are cut like a like a standard, like a regular tag, okay? And I already did the um, prep with the paint and the lines and the gesso. Uh, so now we have three to work with here, okay? I'm gonna give this just a, yeah, just, a, that's a little tacky, that one. But it won't take much longer, I promise you that. Okay, so all three of them are a little different. <clears throat> I did not, um, Oh, I just realized something. Oh, wait a minute. I can do it. I can do it. I have one more. Okay, so while those are drying, I'm going to show you really quick how I did the background for this, for this one. This one looks more like um, a birch tree. I did not use any distress paints for that. I used just, well, let me just clean this up real quick. Just hang on a second. I'm going to grab my baby wipes on the other side of the room. Just hang tight. I'm not going far. I thought I was prepared. I really did. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take some baby wipes. One or two. Oh. Sorry, Smudge. Um, yeah, I just woke my little Chihuahua up. Grunting and groaning, you hear? That was his, 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 uh, that I cramped his style. I woke him up and 
made him move and the baby wipes fell on top of him. Not too bad. Yeah. I think he thinks in some way that he's special. <laughs> no, he really is. I love him with all my heart. Um, he's spoiled rotten. And that's where he sits or sleeps all day. He, he, he can't stand to be away from me. He has such separation. So serious separation anxiety. Yeah. J uh, my husband and I are supposed to go away to um, a big event in Raleigh here at the end of this month. I'm hope I'm, I'm going to worry terribly about him because I don't think he's ever been away from me that long. And, uh, yeah. God. I, I'm just... I don't know. Because he goes, he does everything with me. Everything. Okay. So, in order to do this, this kind of effect, like the birch tree effect, okay? Let's see if I can get them out here. Where are they? I'm looking for my paints. I'm looking for my paints. My watercolor paints. I had them. I really did. I'll just grab these. Mm. <clears throat> so, I don't know where those paints are. Hang on, I'll be right back, everyone. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a brain cramp, sorry. I just don't, couldn't remember what I did with some of my watercolor paints. Because that's one of the things I absolutely, you absolutely need in order to do this tag the way I did it. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to wait until the very end to do the lines, okay? So, where is... <laughs> Let me see. We're going to get that paintbrush right there. Okay. And then, we're going to... I need my little... One of the best and greatest free tools to use for watercolor painting is a cut up credit card. Faux credit card. You know, in, they send you faux or uh, fake uh, credit cards in the mail all the time, you know, trying to promote and want you to sign up and that sort of thing. But yeah, faux credit cards. Or, or old credit cards that you're not going to use anymore, or debit cards or whatever. Just cut them up into pieces so there's rough or sharp edges on one side. <clears throat> they make one of the best tools for watercoloring, for effects and textures. And Okay, so this is what I did. Okay, um, you take the side with the rough kind of edge, cut off edges, okay, and you just make like like weird like lines and then maybe a couple to the side and then a wavy thing here and then and then on the side again and then maybe like 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 a faux knot okay okay and then we just keep doing it. We're going to run this one down here. And it's okay if you pick up some of that gesso because it'll just give it more character when it's done. And then maybe take the edge here. Scratch it up a little bit.
Okay, I'd say that was good enough, I think. Just, it's important to make the marks. Okay, so then we're going to take some water on your paintbrush. Okay, and we're going to mix ultramarine blue or a, or a substitute thereof. Something that looks like ultramarine blue, okay, or a, uh, the color that you would use for watercolor sky, okay, and we're going to put some in this little palette, this ceramic palette here, okay, water it down, and then get some more pigment here. Um, I've been watercolor painting for about three years now, and the first person I ever watched watercolor paint was Lindsay Wirick. She is also known as the Frugal Crafter on YouTube, and she is she lives in and has lived in um, a state way up in New England called Maine, and that's also where my husband is from. He spent a lot of time there as a child. Um, I grew up in Vermont, in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, that area. So, but anyhow, I, Lindsay Wirk has, uh, she has taught me a great deal. Um, and this is one of the, this little trick with a credit card, totally learned that from her. Okay, so I've got enough of that ultramarine blue. Now we're gonna bring in some burnt sienna or something similar to it. And that's like an orangey brown. We're going to bring that in, some of that pigment in there with it. Okay. And then and we're going to just keep mixing the two colors together until you get, or, till, until, or until I get, the shade of like a gray blue, where you can barely see the, the blue, but it's more gray but it makes a great mix. Okay, so we're gonna just get some paper or an old tag here and see if it's kind of what I'm looking for. I think I want just a little bit more blue in there. Let's add some more water. Yeah, I just want it to be the color I'm looking for. Just keep going back and forth until you get the, the shade you like. Okay, hopefully this time it's better. I don't know, we'll see. It's almost there. getting there. Almost there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. It's kind of Okay. Oh yeah, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just Now we're just going to brush this on. Okay, I I really I think I'm going to use the bigger brush because it holds a lot more water. I'm just going to brush it back and forth. Some areas you want to be um, lighter than others. Okay. Okay. Just going to just 
brush it back and forth. Okay, now we're going to take a baby wipe and just blot it. I'll probably bring that little brush back in now and then just bring a brush on one side and then let a little bit of this drip down and do it again over here doesn't have to be perfect harsh lines, hard lines. We don't want that. So make sure that there isn't any. Just kind of rub them out or brush them out rather. Okay, and we're going to take again that baby wipe. Okay. Okay, I think that looks good. We're going to let that dry a little bit. We'll come back to it, okay? We will come back to it. We're going to let that dry. Okay, I'm going to move this to the side, these paints to the side momentarily. And then we're going to come back to this. I'll wipe this up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Too wet. There's my little towel. I'm gonna have to wash this down with alcohol later. Um, okay, so now the next step on this one. No, are we gonna do that? No, we're gonna do this one. Okay, so this one's definitely dry by now. Yeah. Okay. Next step is uh, the image that's on here uh, and on this one as well are images that I found on the graphics ferry. So, um, and they're all, what are they called? Image transfer, printable image transfers. I think that's that was the category where I found them in. And then, so I, what I did was I printed the image onto white tissue paper with my new um, Epson EcoTank printer. Um, I, some printers will accept just the white tissue paper, but mine won't. I had to take some repositionable spray adhesive and just spray the corners of like white basic copy paper and then I lay I would lay the white tissue paper on top and it would hold in the corners and then I would just cut it to size and then print it that way so this is one of the images that I printed out okay and that will go on to the wood panel tag like this and how I do it, I learned this trick from uh, Sagita. Yeah, Bohemian Crafting, Sagita. I think it's Sagita. Yeah, it was Sagita that I learned it from. Um, so this is just a piece of packaging acetate, okay? And what I do, what I did was, first of all, I got to take the, got to take the image off the paper, okay? And then 
I lay the image face down onto the acetate. And then I take my homemade Mod Podge glue. Okay. I still I do use Mod Podge sometimes, but this little mixture right here is and it works really good. So I just use it I use it more than I do anything else. Okay, so got this little tiny fan brush and and this is Elmer's glue wall. Not the washable, not the kids glue, Elmer's glue wall. And it's basically three parts glue all to one part water. And it works fantastic. Okay, now gently take the glue all from the center and work out. Okay. <gasps> nope, it's good. I can fix it. Yeah, you just have to be really patient here. You cannot, you have to be gentle. I mean gentle, so you don't rip it. Ask me how I know this. It's true. I'm an idiot sometimes. Okay, so, okay, so like I said, gently, gently. Could I even this out a little bit? Okay. You have to make sure there's a pretty good coating of this all over. This really helps with uh, bubbles and wrinkles and that sort of thing. Okay. I think I covered it all. Mm, let's see. Maybe a little bit more here. Okay, okay. Okay. Then, I'll put that in the water. Then, you flip the acetate over and you kind of line it up as best as you can. Okay. And then you press and you rub and you press. Get all those bubbles out Just, and press. Hold down with one hand, press with the other from the center and work your way out. getting work out. Okay. I'll just let that press it a little bit more. I could see a couple more bubbles. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but it really, really helps though. Like, no joke. It really cuts down on the wrinkles and the bubbles and it just, I mean, it really works. Love this technique. I use it all the time. Okay. Now, from one corner, okay, you almost pull the acetate up like you're gonna about to roll it, okay, and gently press and roll it up, press and roll it up, gently. Now, I'm going to let that dry. 
and we're going to do this other one. And this other one, I'm pretty sure I had one. I had an image for that too. I really did. No, I really did. Oh, there it is. She's the beauty. I like this one too. Samuel Levy, dealer in watches and clocks, jewelry and silverware, spectacles, opera glasses, etc., etc. Suffolk, Virginia. I mean, ooh. How prim and proper. Okay. Okay. Again, we do the same thing that we just did. Okay. Face down. No, nope, that's not right. Face down. that brush out again and we mix it up in that glue because there was a little bit of water on it yeah okay again from the center out Okay, we're in business now. All right. I think I did okay on that one. All right, back in that, yep. Okay. And we line it up again, just like we did the last one. Press and rub. Just like that. Okay. Okay, and then again, press, hold down and roll gently and slowly. Make sure it's sticking. That can be a little tough sometimes. Slowly. Some corners work better than others. Well, this one just doesn't want to pull up, so I'm just going to let it sit for a second more. Just a second more. Let's try this corner. Okay. You see that sides? Okay. So now we're going to turn this around. I'm going to put a little bit more glue down because sometimes it doesn't like to stick. As well as you'd like, yes, as well as you want it to. 
So you just kind of put a little bit more glue over the top, press it down, press it down in those spots that just want to be stubborn. corner okay. I'll just give that a couple of minutes to dry and I bet the other one's dry now how is our sheet okay See, that's the start of it, okay? okay I'm going to let that one dry. Set this up over there. And... Okay, I'm not going to make you listen to me run the dryer or the heating tool. So I'll be right back, and then we'll go to the next step. Be right back. I'm back. Sorry it took me so long. Well, to you it didn't take me very long, but to me it took me forever. Um, but anyways, um, I finished up a little bit on the other one and did put down this uh, decoupage, this image down onto this one, the one that was uh, more like a birch tree. Again, none of them are going to come out the same way every time. Uh, and, th and that's what I love about it is that each tag is going to be unique. Um, so I decoupage these images onto the tags. You saw me do a couple of them. Um, these are all dry now. Um, I believe on one of them, yeah, like on this one, this corner stamp it says a, it's a postage from Manchester England um, that's a, an acrylic stamp that I put there uh, so is the number seven with the French writing up here in the corner that's also an acrylic stamp that I added to it and the word Venice I added that too um, this the actual flower and leaves is a rubber stamp that I put on to the cover or onto the top of the stamp um, tag and then I took some acrylic paint and or some watercolors. Uh, no, I think it was watercolors, yeah. That, and I painted in the leaves and the uh, flowers and I put a little bit of gold, metallic gold, uh, little dots in around the purple fl violet flowers. Um, I think these are, this is a hydrangea? Yeah, it's hydrangea. Um, but I have, that's how I did the cover with this one. Um, I don't need to show I don't think I need to show you that because I mean that's what it is is I just I simply put it once everything was dry and and the actual uh, faux wood technique was done then I just stamped it colored it in with some watercolors and then along the edge of this tag I took deco art metallic luster gold rush um, and I just rub some on my fingertips with a little bit of wa water, I mean like a tiny amount, to make it more easily spreadable. Um, and I just literally, I mean lightly, just on the edge, all the way around the tag, uh, rub that gold metallic luster. And on the back is, I stamped the words, own your story, with some coffee stained paper, so you, so they could, some, whoever receives the journal that I'm going to put this in uh, can journal on the back of that tag. Um, and then the other two basically were like this, like these, and um, I think on the bottom of them, I can't seem to find it right now, but oh, there it is. Like this image right there, this image right there, was from Graphics Fairy. And then 
the word since and then 1892. Um, I have letter and number stamps. Um, and this one, this on this on this little acrylic block is the numbers 1892. And I just stamped the word since and 1892 on the bottom to add to make it look more authentic. Um, but that's pretty much it. And then on the top, uh, of course, up in the corners, I used my crocodile and put some eyelets in. Um, this is some jute twine. This is some black stained jute twine. Um, and but on to finish them off or to seal them rather. I did, I used, um, on the, on the, just the plain, uh, on the birch one, I used Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium, Matte Medium, and then on the top of the one, the wood panels that looked more like rustic browns, the reds. Um, I used Distress, Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium Vintage. And it really just like, it just, not only does it seal it, but it just kind of, it sinks down into the cardboard and it makes it like this one. You can see the difference. If I hold them up, you can see the difference. You can see the difference. It almost like that, oh, I'm telling you, I just love Tim Holtz. Every, just, just about every single product I've ever purchased of his, or any product that he's associated with, um, I just can't say enough good things. Um, but that's what I did. That's how I finish them off. Um, I don't, uh, if, if there's something that I didn't answer, um, if, I, if there's a question I didn't answer or if I happen to be off camera and, and you didn't see me do something and you, ha and you don't understand, please, please, please do not hesitate to post a question below or post a message below this video. And I, I really do. I'm, I'm really, most of the time I'm really good about answering everybody or responding to everyone because I'm just so grateful and, and appreciative of having this crafty little tribe. Um, and, and it just, it really, it's important to me. So, so if you have any questions, post a message below. Again, if you're new, Click on subscribe, ding that little notification bell so you can be, so I can let you know or YouTube can let you know of my future videos. Um, I hope you all have a blessed day and I, and I really hope that you've enjoyed watching me uh, make these tags. Um, I've got a ton more ideas and I'm just really trying hard to finish this carpet bagger because it's going to be wrapped in a quilt. That's all I'm saying. So I guess that's it for now. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye for now.